Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us praise the Lord for who he is. The Lord is exalted over the Bahamas. He's exalted over the Americas. The Lord is exalted over all nations. His glory above the heavens. How great is our God. How great is he. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. Let us praise the Lord for what he has done. Great are the works of the Lord. They are honored by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes, with the princes of their people. He settles the barren woman in her home as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works. He says to the storm, this is your boundary line, go no further. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. Let us praise the Lord for his character. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The prayer of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. The Lord is exalted over all the nations. His glory above the heavens. Let's all say hallelujah.
people said? Let the Amen sound from his people again. We got some joy. These songs were designed to encourage all of us. Give me joy in my heart. Keep me praising. to the king and we round off this section of our praise giving God all we have left it's called total praise we're gonna praise him from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same come on now praise him lift your voice praise your hearts praise
cannot end this worship by just saying Jesus is worthy. As we were going through these songs, I, I couldn't help but reflecting. Um, let me see the hands of parents here today. Parents, if you're a parent, can you still say after going through some of the stuff you go through with your children, you can put them down now, that you, you can still praise Jesus? I, I need some people to join me. How many of you have suffered terrible, terrible disappointment? Terrible disappointment. In your disappointment, can you still say that Jesus is worthy to be praised? When your faith has left you feeling so wounded, so wounded, like, should I go on? Should I go on being identified with Jesus? You know, like sometimes as a parent, I feel like I failed terribly, terribly. Especially when I go in a, in a Sunday school class like this morning and I'm challenged and it says that Father is the one who's supposed to ensure that these things happen. It is the Father who's supposed to make sure that it happens. And if it don't look right, if the fruit don't look right, you look to the Father. Don't care what your wife do. It is the Father. Can I still praise the Lord in that environment? I say yes. Even when I'm feeling unsure about the work that he has given me to do. And I feel like this because when the truth comes home to you and you, you don't have much you could do about it anymore because my children are grown. I'm just looking at the fruit. Anybody else here with me? So we come to encourage each other and we say, I could certainly still say from the rising of the sun. I could say, Father, I did the best I could. I tried to pass on to my children the heritage you asked me to pass. And I want to worship you despite what it looks like. So if you're here as a parent and you might feel like, boy, I'm right there with Elder Pete today. Either say amen or wave your hand. Do something. Let me know I'm not standing alone here today now. No. From the rising of the sun. Pastor Hannah, I want to go back to the top. Let's praise the Lord Come who gives us. Praise him.
praise him indeed. Good morning, church. Good morning to those of you that are visiting with us as well. Last week, we introduced the church's theme for the year, Know What You Believe and Know Why You Believe It. And last Wednesday and today in our Sunday school class, we're getting a deeper appreciation for that. The communion moments that we are about to partake of would be a case in point of us needing to know what we believe and why we believe it. For you see, if the secularists would have his way, if the world would have its way, man is the evolutionary product of random chance, and over millions and billions of years, the final product coming out of that is the world as we know it and man as we know it. And if one were to take that up, I, I want to elucidate for us today that there would be no reason for us to be here, for your faith would be in vain. There would be no need for Jesus, and certainly no need for the church. What do I mean? Well, the scriptures say to us quite candidly, taking the book of Genesis as a real book where the real events took place and real truth was espoused. In Romans chapter 5, verse 12, we hear the apostle say this, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people because all have sinned. The evolutionary framework would have us to believe that for billions of years, billions and billions of years, death and life and evolution and death and life and evolution and time and chance and random chance has brought us to this world. Uh, there is no uh, first man because he was constantly evolving from uh, whatever he evolved from to uh, an ape-like creature and finally to man. Where is this first Adam? He doesn't technically exist. But according to the revelation of Scripture, God made man, and he made him in the image of God, and he gave that man a relationship with himself. And the man fell into sin, and as God promised, when this happens, you will bring you will have a knowledge of good and evil, and death will plague mankind and disease and everything else. And so Paul helps us to understand what we believe. We believe that God made Adam, and Adam fell into sin. This is not some myth. This is not some theological construct, as they say, that we believe. No. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, in this way death came to all people, because all have sinned. Moving down, it says in verse 15, But the gift is not like the trespass or the transgression. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, Adam, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? If there's no literal Adam, why do you need a literal Second Adam, Jesus. Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of the one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. You see, no real fall into transgression, no need for the multi multiplied gifts and favor and grace and justification that was brought about through the second Adam, Jesus Christ. We must know what we believe. We can't just move along with what the world says and just try to add a little bit of our religion on top of an evolutionary, secular, humanist worldview and expect to get the faith. We've been told to earnestly contend for the faith that we enjoy. And our faith is intimately grounded and attached to the fall of one man. For as in Adam, all died and fell into transgression. Even so in Christ shall all the faithful who are trusting in him be made alive. No Adam, no need for the second Adam. No fall into sin, no need for the rich grace and justification brought to us through Jesus Christ. We need to know what we believe and why we believe it. As in Adam, we all died. We were in Adam. We were in the fall. We were there 
with Adam, being the seed of Adam. And because what we have been told through the scriptures in Genesis, written by Moses and confirmed by Jesus, who reference the biblical narrative again and again for his explanation of everything, they asked him about marriage. What does Genesis say? What, 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 what have you been taught? Brothers and sisters, our faith, the reason we need Jesus is because Adam sinned. The reason Jesus was not a phantom, a ghost, or an angel, but came in human flesh was because our first forefather, Adam, died and fell into sin, having disobeyed God in the garden. There was need for a second Adam to come, to be our kinsman redeemer of real human flesh. And his temptation in the garden revealed his obedience. Adam's temptation in the garden revealed his disobedience, the condemnation that followed by Christ's Obedience to God in the garden manifest later on the cross of Calvary has come the means of our justification. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We can remain under the lineage of Adam, which we are by birth, but there must be a change by our repentance and receiving the great work of God accomplished for us in Jesus Christ that we receive a new birth and a new headship under that of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we must know what we believe. And we must know why we believe it. <clears throat> not an evolved man, not a caveman, not a Neanderthal, not a Cro-Magnon, but a man made in the image of God. A man made with worth and dignity. A man who fell into corruption. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. These are real things and they're real to our faith and our faith finds its full meaning and understanding when we recognize that the Bible that we have is the inerrant word of God where it speaks to life and creation and, and the things that it speaks to, it speaks with absolute authority and we can stake our faith on it. Because friends, if the Passover didn't happen, then what Jesus did on the night in which he was betrayed makes no sense. For Jesus took the Passover and he put it together and he says, listen, the bread was to be eaten in haste and the cup was bitter herbs to be drunk, remembering the years of bitterness that you spent. And it was all to be done in a home under the blood of a lamb, its blood shed and placed around the lintel post of the door. Jesus took all of those symbols and brought them together in himself. And Jesus became the second, the last Adam. Jesus became the true Passover, whose blood has been shed for us that we might be saved. And all those who are looking for their salvation by getting under the blood are saved from the judgment of God that Adam brought on us by his disobedience. Christ has delivered us from by his obedience. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Where are you, brothers and sisters? We take our Christian faith as a reality. Jesus Christ died to save us, and we are his. Believers, we're called to examine ourselves before we eat. As I would break the bread and distribute the cup to the ushers in just a moment, if you are a believer, take a few moments to say, Lord, I've drifted from you this week. I've, my thoughts have been uh, towards other things. But, Lord, I want to get right again. And I want to continue to offer myself to you as an instrument of your choosing. Grateful for having received Christ as Lord, whenever that was, and I, I want to continue to live to the praise of his glory. Friend, if you're not a believer, you've not made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ, these moments are actually for believers alone. For Jesus says that it is a remembrance feast of what, we have, what he has done for us. And so if you're a non-Christian, you've not yet made a decision for the Lord, just pass the emblems on by. We, we're used to that. We won't think it funny if you pass it on. Um, but we do pray that during our time today, the, 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 the revelation, the knowledge of how you can be saved and enjoy a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ 
would be one that you would respond to. You would make a decision for him today, trusting him as Lord and Savior. Amen. I'm going to return after the emblems have been distributed. We've, we've sang with a word, and then we will eat and drink together. Please hold the emblems, and we will eat and drink together. Thank you.
No condemnation. Now we dread, for one reason alone, we are no longer under the accountability of Adam's sin. No condemnation now I dread. Jesus, all in him, is mine. He has owned us completely. And he said when he gathered his disciples to him during that last evening he had with them, and he said, or rather, here's Paul's retelling of the event. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This bread represents his body. He had to come in human flesh to be in the likeness of, of Adam's fallen race, uh, not the appearance of flesh, but real flesh. And we, he came to be our kinsman redeemer. We eat this bread in remembrance of what Christ has done by offering his body in our place, taking our condemnation that we might receive his holiness and the blessings of God. Shall we eat in glad remembrance? Verse 25 says, In the same way after supper he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We remind in our Sunday school class to have things that are repeated again and again so that the message is passed on. So fathers will instruct their sons, why do we do this? And friends, Jesus said he doesn't want us to remember his birth. Uh, and many of the things he did, but he does. In other words, he didn't say remember that. But one thing he did say to remember is to remember that he died for us and that we should proclaim that. We should remember that. We should memorialize that in the breaking of the bread where we recognize that the bread represents his body broken for us and the cup is blood shed, ushering in a new covenant that removes completely the guilt and stain of our sin and its condemnation. So that we can sing, as we sang just now, no condemnation we are in dread of because of what Jesus has done. Let us drink together in memory of what Christ has done to save us by his own blood, shall we? Amen. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Every time I hear that, that, that hymn, my body is filled with goose pimples. To think that a king would die for me. And I love, I love to praise him. Because when nobody else is around me, He's always there in the midnight hour when my wife has no idea what's going on I can just whisper a prayer and he's there when nobody cared about me he cared enough to die for me when nobody was interested in talking to me he was interested in me see God is awesome He's awesome, very awesome. And I wish we would get to know him some more and to understand who he is. That it took everything for him to give up his son to die in our place. And guess what? No amount of detergent could wash us as clean as the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing. No bleach could bleach us as white as his blood. See, we, we don't understand that. How could blood make us clean? But it is a spotless lamb of God. For that we can say, hallelujah.
it's my pleasure this time to welcome our guests who are here with us, who are sharing our service. I have a few names here. Pardon me if I mispronounce your name. Uh, we have Patrice Brown. When I call your name, I'm going to ask you to stand and wave so we can see who you are. Patrice Brown. Wonderful. Nice to have you. We have Jairus Williams. Nice. Lydia Smith. Wonderful. Gina Williams. Wonderful. Stephanie and Kevin Williams. Perez Wright. Wonderful. I'm going to ask us to give them a rousing round of applause. Do we have any other visitors who are here? You may have come in. You may have stepped into the side door or the back door without any of the greeters seeing you. You want to stand and just be recognized. We have something about there. In the front right here. I also see uh, Pastor Rex and his wife, Sister Doreen. They're right in the corner here. Thank God for you. Do we have any of any Grace members who have been away for the summer? You're just returning, or you're away for a short time, maybe four or five weeks, and we haven't seen you. You want to stand and wave your hand so we can see you? No. Wonderful. So we're all family. Now, to our, to our visitors, we are extremely happy that you have chosen to worship with us today. And because you are extra special, you are the first, first batch of visitors to christen our newly renovated state-of-the-art fellowship hall, which is to the rear of the building, right downstairs. And we're going to invite you right after the service to come join us there and enjoy some goodies. All right? At this time, we'll invite our brother Adam Trico to come. Morning, Grace. I gave you all another short verse. Who's happy about it? <clears throat> no, we want a longer one. The longer one is next month. Oh, yes? Brian's sick today, so he asked me to take over. Now, Corinthians 3. Cor Calari, Colossians 3. Too much seeds. Colossians 3 kind of opens up by buttering you up saying you have been bought by Christ. So now let's start here. It's basically saying you have been bought by Christ, so therefore bear with one another. You get it? Because you already set aside and holy, then you must. Not then you can. No amens? Amens mean I agree, not that you're talking very well. All right? All right, because you are put aside and you are holy, you must and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Now in your head, put the word because right here, right before forgive, the second forgive. forgive. Forgive one another because the Lord forgave you. All right, everybody gets the point? Amen? We agree. All right. Bear with each other. And forgive the grievances you may have against one another. Forgive because the Lord forgave you. All right. Colossians 3, verse 13. 
So when the church member next to you is bucking with your elbow and they singing, forgive them. <laughs> All right. One more time. Colossians 3, verse 13. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. All right. I normally don't do this, but I'm going to have a little plug in. King's Court, we have a meeting, a very short one, the very, very short kind, immediately after church in the front area. So I'll see you after one. All right. Thanks, Grace. Y'all did awesome. Good morning, Grace. I just want to take this opportunity for our missions moments today, which we've been trying to do each month, is to say thank you for each of you guys who give towards missions. To say thank you very much for the money that you invest in uh, missionaries around the world. And, uh, you know, I'm not there to pat you on the back or shake your hand and say thank you, but I want to say it publicly um, because we really appreciate the fact that what you're going to see this morning, we've been trying to help you to see where your money goes, to see the impact that your giving is having. And we try to highlight missionaries that we do support so that you could be encouraged, okay, that your money is having an impact. You know, um, if you really want to see where someone's heart is, you look at their bank account and you see where the money's going. And I honestly believe that we're not going to know the impact that our giving has on the missions field until we get to be with Jesus in heaven. Because um, he's the one that knows that it's touching lives, it's answering prayers, as you'll see in the video this morning, that your money is going to actually really meet needs and lead people to Christ. We're going to look at a, a three-minute Barnabas Fund. And the Barnabas Fund is one of those ones that we do support. In fact, and we have like a dual support because it's one of our missionaries organizations that we support on a regular basis, as well as the fact that we've had a special outreach to help them build some of the homes back. So we have like a, a double prong approach. So just look at it and I'll come back and make one or two comments, but thank you very much for your giving and here's why you're giving and this is the impact it's having. Thanks. Galatians 6 and 6. As we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. In many countries, our brothers and sisters suffer for the name of Christ. They can experience harassment, discrimination, injustice, and persecution from harsh governments or from other religions. Christians are often poor and suffer oppression at the hands of their neighbors in Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Communist, and other contexts. Anti-Christian hostility has many faces. Attacks on churches and Christian communities, killing of pastors, the arrest of leaders, discrimination in education, healthcare, employment, and in society generally. Converts can suffer discrimination, violence, and even death when they turn to Christ. Everything was just chaotic. They would beat me up, lock me up in rooms, to say I'm hallucinating, I'm being deceived. They would flog me nearly every day and force me to say you have to come back to Islam. The church is the body of Christ. If one part of the body suffers, every part suffers with it. God calls us to help relieve that suffering. Barnabas Fund enables Christians to open their hearts to their brothers and sisters in over 60 countries by channeling aid from Christians, through Christians, to Christians. Some of our projects meet the practical needs of impoverished Christian communities. Water is a fundamental need. Barnabas Fund helps to provide clean water wells and filtration systems. Feeding programs are a lifeline for needy Christian families and especially at times of famine or natural disasters. Monthly food parcels assist thousands of families in Pakistan, Iraq, Syria, Egypt and Zimbabwe. Emergency relief can be an urgent need when disasters strike places where Christians are despised and neglected. As you can see, the city is flooded and nothing is available. When the aeroplanes drop the food aid, most of it goes in the water, so we hardly get anything. Aid from Barnabas, delivered by local partners in the country concerned, is often amongst the first to arrive. Barnabas Fund helps with construction and running costs of Christian schools to enable Christian children to get an education in a supportive environment. 
Barnabas Fund helps Christian communities develop and become self-reliant. Small grants help Christians to start their own businesses. Barnabas also seeks to give attention to the spiritual, pastoral and discipling needs of Christian communities and churches. Christian Literature Projects provide the Word of God and good teaching to everyone. Each year, Barnabas Fund supports the production and distribution of thousands of items in many different languages. Barnabas helps to support hundreds of pastors, evangelists and church planters, serving God in their own countries. We also fund theological colleges, Bible schools, training courses and conferences to equip the church of today to build the church of tomorrow. Construction projects help when there is a need for new churches, Bible colleges, schools and many other kinds of building. Barnabas Fund supports many projects to help converts and other victims of violence where they face discrimination and violence following the Lord Jesus. Barnabas Fund tells the untold story of persecuted Christians raising awareness and speaking out about their plight. As part of the family of God, will you join us in praying and providing practical assistance to brothers and sisters in need? That's what your money is doing. And that's the type of impact it's having. And I want to say thank you again. Um, if I had to ask you who's on our missions board, because you have a hardworking missions team that meets once a month that really try and plan ahead. We have a, another missionary, Sandy Lee, that we've added this year. I know some young men in this congregation who are eager to look at the mission field. But if I had to ask you who's on our mission board, could you tell me? All right, I'm going to ask them to stand so you can make sure you know who they are. So if you're on our mission board, just stand up real quickly. And uh, you can take an opportunity at the end of the service this morning and say thank you. There's Llewellyn here at the front, Sister Doreen, Sister Tina, Sister Frederica. And those who are missing would be Sister Minnie Nielsen, Van Fowler, and Bernadette Butler. All right, and that's your team. So make sure and tell them you appreciate the work that they're doing. And keep us in prayer. Just to let you know real quickly for next year, 2013, we have our missions conference already planned out. It's going to be February 17th to 24th. I want you to keep that in prayer. Our speaker is going to be Pastor Ochenate, and um, he's, he's the uh, one that we've been supporting as well. If you've seen his video, he does a great work in the whole area Pacific region, and uh, he, he's blessed us tremendously in the past. He's going to be coming again. So please keep us in prayer. Um, we're trying to do things that, that really help you appreciate where your money's going, the impact it's having. And um, one of the things we want to do too is we want to try have a live link uh, through Skype. Uh, Brother Ted Seymour and Ken Tooming are going to be actually in ministry during the time of our missions conference. So we're going to try link up, link up for a live um, link with them so they can actually speak to us from the field. Um, so that is some of the things we're doing, but thank you very much for your support. Keep giving, and God will continue to bless. Thank you. Amen. At this time, we're going to invite the Sunday school teachers to come forward as we dismiss the children for sin. Oh, my apologies. We're going to do the birthdays before, because the kids usually don't get to hear their, their birthday. And then we do one announcement while they're here that, that pertains to the kids. We're going to invite Sister Rochelle to do that while I try and find the list. Hello, everybody. Um, before the kids leave, um, we just want to, Teresa and I, uh, want to remind parents, because we did have an announcement last week, that we are starting the children's choir again this Saturday, October 6th, uh, from 4 to 5. Um, there's one slight change um, from what we uh, were accustomed to doing. We used to be um, inviting children from grades, grades 1 through 6. This year, we changed it a little bit. We want to do ages 5 to 12, okay, just before they enter the teen years. So we, uh, we know we have some 12-year-olds in seventh grade. They are welcome to come and be a part of the choir. Four o'clock 
In fact, if you can get them here at least by 10 to 4, we'd appreciate it. We want to start with our devotional time right at 4 o'clock, and we intend to start at 4 with whoever is here. And um, parents, please also be sure to collect your children at 5 o'clock, okay? Uh, we look forward to seeing everybody coming back, and we look forward to, to especially seeing some new faces on Saturday. After church, we will have forms for the parents of those children who will be coming. Um, we would like for you to bring that with you, bring the forms with you on Saturday um, so that we don't waste that time, you know, signing up the children. We'd like for you to do that during this week, please. So see Teresa and myself after the service today, please. Thanks. And the birthday, just before the kids go, before they go, I want to make sure that they hear their names and they hear the birthday song. Celebrating birthdays this week are uh, on, on the 6th of October, Barbara Johnson and Jennifer Butler. On the 4th, Brandy, Brandon Toot. On the 3rd, Luke Johnson. On the 2nd, Starnesia, Coco Dean. On the 1st of October, Laverne Delavaux, Chandelique Dean, and Karen Butler. And today, on the 30th, we have Christine Knowles, Annette McDonald. And Christine is doing two things, things on the same day. She's also celebrating her wedding anniversary today. That's Marcus and Christine Knowles. On the second, we have Herman and Dorothy Colby. On the fourth, we have Philip and Sandra Kemp. So, Pastor Hannah, our birthday jingle for... While the kids are going on, I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward as we take the offering. I'm going to invite you all to stand as we recite our operatory covenant. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, Luke 6, 38. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your substance, and your bonds be filled to overflowing and your vats will bring over with new wine. Give and be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Father, we acknowledge that nothing we have belongs to us. Not even the very breath we breathe right now is ours. It all comes from you. Our health, our wealth, the very families you have given to us, Lord, they're not even ours. We're only stewards. We're also stewards of the monies that you have put in our possession. And at this time, as we seek to give, give back a portion of it to you, we ask that you will bless it, the Father. May it be used for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth. Bless those who have to give today. And those who would love, love to give, but they don't have it, we ask that you will bless them too. Bless those who are struggling financially. Those who are in need of a job, we ask that you provide for them. This we ask in son's name. Amen. During this time, we'll take the grace news, and we have Brother Ram Saga is going to come to us. And following Brother Ram, we're going to have Brother Rohan and Sister Jean Kalma.
Good afternoon. <clears throat> I want to read some scripture. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 25 verse 36. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Romans 10:15. And how can they preach unless they are sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This week we went to hospital uh, visitation at PMH hospital as well as we went to door to door ministry in this area. It's the first time I see a great number from the church coming to the hospital to pray and uh, there are a number of people who accepted the Christ number of people who receive prayers and blessing. Some are newcomers, some who are already doing it, the service. Now, there is no excuse if you can come and participate in this ministry. This is a commandment from God. As, a, as the Father sent me, I'm going to send you. So we, all we have to do is say, Lord, I am ready. If you don't know how to preach, uh, to teach, or to evangelize, all you have to do is come and stand beside us. And you learn that how we can, we are talking about God. We have excellent t-shirts now, we have tracks. We have no, ex you have no excuses for saying, okay, we are not ready. I can tell you one thing. There was a person who was, this is a real story, who was crying. Because his son is dying and they are trying to reach the doctor to come and to do the surgery. After a couple of minutes, they found the doctor and the doctor came and this father was so mad, cursing and murmuring, all kind of things. Doctor didn't answer to him. Went inside, finished the operation and came back and he said, the son is, is now fine. As the doctor left, the secretary came and told to the father and said, you know what his condition is? And the father said, what it is? He just came from the, the burial ground. He's burying his first son, and he got a call that there's emergency here. He left that place and came. We have no excuses to say that, Lord, I have this thing to do, that thing to do. I cannot go. I cannot preach. I cannot talk. I cannot. All kind of excuses. Lord is not going to accept it. You're ready? Instead of going outside, watching TV, spending some time, please come and take your share. This is not anybody's ministry. This is God's ministry. Let us work together. Um, this Tuesday, we have prayer at, uh, in the nursery. And this Friday, coming Friday, we're going again to hospital visitation. Once in a month, we are doing door-to-door. -door. I'm telling you, it is so good response. We went to one house, and the response was, what do you came for? I, t I said, I came to talk about God. What are you going to talk about God? That Jesus Christ came and died for your sins. And we explained to her. After everything she, uh, we finished, she said, you know, I'm Jehovah Witness. <laughs> so I said, that's good. But I came to talk about God to who can go heaven. See, we laugh, we say, we want tracks. She said, no, thank you. Now, the point is, they are reaching every door, and we are not reaching the doors. So she was surprised that grace is coming out now. So come and take your full share. Thank you. This is a presentation to the church from the Hummingbirds Association. It's the Association of Jamaican Residents in the Bahamas. And we, the Hummingbirds, um, celebrating 50, at least Jamaica is celebrating 50 years of independence. And um, we feel fit to honor some people in, the, in um, the Bahamas. And Grace was one of them. Um, 
It's read um, the Hummingbirds Association Certificate of Appreciation in celebration of Jamaica's 50th anniversary of independence, August 6, 2012. This certificate is awarded to Grace Community Church for invaluable contribution to the Hummingbirds Association and the Jamaican diaspora in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. On behalf of the Hummingbird Association, Mr. Handel and the Council, we take great pleasure in presenting this speech. I also want to say that Mr. Rowan Carr was also presented with the same appreciation from the Hummingbirds. Good afternoon, Grace. Jean was also presented with a certificate also. <laughs> um, in saying that, um, you know, we celebrated 50 years of independence, but the celebration didn't stop there. We are celebrating for the whole entire year. Um, saying that to say this is that we are hosting a gospel concert on the 6th of October, which is next week, Saturday, at the BFM Center. The come this Saturday, I'm sorry, this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. It is called Gospel Jam Fest. It's a huge gospel concert. We are having local artists and artists out of Jamaica. The tickets are going for only $15, one five, not $20, $15. And children under 12 is $10. And the funds are going towards charity. Uh, one of the charity is Reach Autism in the Bahamas. And the other one is St. Anne's Bay Hospital in Jamaica. They're in desperate need of a, what do you call it, um, psychiatric ward. So we're asking for your help by just purchasing tickets, only $15. Children under 12, $10. Thank you very much. After church, you could see me on the scholar for tickets. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. For the, the men who have not received the email, if we don't have your email address, please see Carl on Bethel. He'd be happy to take it from you because he sent an email out to say that the NFL today the, uh, will be at Carvel's house and the email has the directions to his house. If you didn't get the email, Carl will be willing to give you the directions to the house. All right. Um, I have one announcement. Um, trying to make sure I don't. Okay, it's right here. This is a wedding announcement. I should save it for last. <laughs> for the rest of the week, uh, the announcements. Parents, please remember to bring your kids out for ministry seekers, the art and craft, and the dance. Sister Stephanie wants to make sure that they're here because she's here. So she wants to have kids to teach, teach them. She can't teach herself to dance because she knows how to dance already. Okay? She wants to teach her kids. She wants to pass her skill on to the kids. Okay? And the art and craft, Miss Kim Brennan would like to train your kids in the craft. Okay? On Wednesday, we have an opportunity to share as a church, wherever you are, you can fast and pray. Wherever you are, you can fast and pray. You don't have to physically be here, but you can decide to forego lunch for the day and just fast and pray. We have so many things to pray about, so many things to pray about. So don't say, I can't do this, I can't do that. You can fast and pray wherever you are. And on Wednesday, the church will fast and pray. Also, Wednesday evening is our elders' groups um, me meeting. Make sure you're here. If you're unsure of which elders' group you belong to, see Sister Maud. She'll be happy to tell you. Or Pastor Lyle. They'll be happy to tell you which group you, you belong to. Okay? Great. Now, what an announcement. Final announcement. Sister Linda Minnie Nielsen and Mr. Michael William Nielsen, parents of the bride, and Elder Greg and Sister Teresa Williams, parents of the groom, 
announced the marriage of their children, Elora Jacqueline Louise Nielsen and Gregory Naldo Duran Williams, on Saturday, the 13th of October, 2012, at 11 a.m., right here at Grace Community Church. And they're asking you to pray for them as they embark upon this journey. With this, we now move into our meditation hymn, one of the great hymns of the church, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. And I invite you to give your full attention to Pastor Lai when he comes. Let's all stand as we will be singing the first and the last stanzas. Thank you, musicians. Thank God for 